No, I, I've appreciated not having to clean off my car and scrape yeah. off the ice. But while that's good, it's not great for other areas because, yeah. you know, snowmobiles, they're synonymous with northern Michigan tourism. But these warming winters have meant taking the sled further north in the mitten. Yeah, I spoke with one business up north and another one actually down here in Metro Detroit about the personal and economic impact of that warm weather. The last three winters at least have been really brutal. It's warmer days throughout the dead of winter that can ruin the conditions for snowmobilers. Chase and Scott are two different sides of the same snowy coin. Both love to snowmobile and have all of their lives, but both also own businesses that are seeing a trend in the wrong direction when it comes to snowmobiling in the northern mitten. I remember riding down here in the lower, it was the snow was gnarly. We got 36 inches in two days, but then within five days, we had grass again. Like it literally was 55 and rainy. So like that's what we're having is these, these huge, huge ups and downs of, of temperature, which we're getting the snow and then losing the snow. So it's really a bummer. Chase owns the Frederick Inn. It's a well-known stop for anyone riding the trails between Grayling and Gaylor. He's grown up there and says he can see the difference year to year with how even a slightly milder winter can have drastic effects on business that rely on snowy tourism. Snowfall and temperature literally defines how our business is during the winter. The northern part of the mitten, the Northwest snow belts in particular, are a well-known area to visit for those in southern parts of the state if they don't want to make a days-long trip in the Upper Peninsula, but it all depends on the snow. If not, you're going up the UP, which is what I had to do, which is like, it's a bummer for us locals too. It's like, I grew up my whole life riding out of the house riding anywhere I needed. It's a lot cheaper than loading up the truck, loading up the trailer, headed another two hours from here to Paradise or Munising or even farther up to Calumet, you know, but top of Harvard. And it isn't just a trip farther north. Scott owns Bright Power Sports in Lincoln Park. While researching for this story, I called seven different power sports dealers. For example, Rosenau and Dearborn. They actually directed me to Scott, and he was the only one still selling snowmobiles. Scott says he is seeing a change in the time of year for snowmobiling, both as a business owner and a rider. So it's the last decade or so, it's been a little bit more of a struggle with the weather because what we start to see is we start to see a lot of these mid midwinter warm ups where, you know, in, in January and February, you get these you know, upper 40s and 50 degree days. So, you know, one of those days can entirely wipe out a week or two worth of snow and base and, you know, setting the trails up. He says that while the sport most definitely still exists and is still popular, there's a worrying change that's happening that was slow at first and has picked up steam as the winters have warmed up north. Scott has seen an age shift. He says the demographic for those buying snowmobiles has shifted from those in their 30s to those well into their 50s. He says that those are the riders who have the free time and the funds to take those long trips farther north where a good base of snow will exist consistently through the winter. Yamaha is also seeing this change. They announced that model year 2025 will be their last in the snowmobiling business internationally. There's no doubt that the winters have, have gotten warmer. Um, over the last several decades. Uh, not a surprise to anybody, I think, who's lived up here for any length of time. Jim Kaiser is the meteorologist in charge of the National Weather Service office in Gaylord. He says that the milder setups cause a lack of the required snowpack that snowmobiles need later into the winter than we saw 20 years ago. What we're seeing sort of more of a backloaded winter, I guess, is how I describe it. You know, January, February, March, better. November, December, not as good all the time. So certainly an economic impact on that side. But, and this is key, that doesn't mean that there isn't any snow falling, or even that snowfall is below average. It is still snowing, but there is a change. Maybe surprising to people, we receive almost the same amount of snow that we've received, really looking back the last 50 or 75 years. The amount of snow has not really changed all that much. Um, it may feel like it's changed. What has changed though is that uh, we're melting more in between the snow events, more thaws, more rain events in between, and it feels like we're sort of on this, this, this seesaw. It may also be easier to melt because the physical makeup of the snow is more of that wet and heavy type of snowfall, the one that's difficult to move, but it melts faster. It can weigh everything down. This is something that's actively being researched. We're actually uh, partnering with the University of Michigan right now on a on a snow study on exactly that topic, and they've got some equipment here in our office which we're looking at sort of the density of snow that's falling. Understand the lake effect machine that generates so much of our snow, when there's less ice on the lakes, 
that Lake Effect machine actually goes in a, in a very robust fashion. So a, a little bit warmer weather, a little warmer winter does not shut off necessarily the Lake Effect snow machine. So that is probably one reason why the Great Lakes is one of the only places in the entire country that has actually been seeing increases or at least steady to increases in amount of winter snowfall in, in almost anywhere in the lower 48. Of course, saying the words climate change or talking about different signs of things warming brings about a very robust debate. And while there is that warming trend in the winter, even with the snowfall staying at average, on that part, Jim gives a little bit of a background to try and break it down, specifically for that northern Michigan area where snowmobiling is so important. This is not linear, okay? This is not, this is not a linear thing. And the climate always changes. I said, so let's just, let's just put a fact on the table, regardless of what you assign the changing because of. Can we all agree that if I look through history, climate changes? It does. And we know that. We know that from ice core samples. We know that from tree rings. We know that from a lot of different things. We know that. That is weather. That's why I got into weather, because it's changing and volatile and extreme. That's weather. Um, do I think humans influence it? In all likelihood, to some degree, yes, they probably do influence it. The bottom line is a warmer winter is displaying a track record affecting snowmobiling conditions in the northern mitten, leading many who used to frequent places like Grayling, Gaylord, Frederick, Kalkaska to all head further north of the bridge, seeking that perfect powder in the Upper Peninsula. For the better part of a couple of decades, you, you could count on December through March being your riding season. We've essentially lost December. If we lose another month, then that could, that could, it, it could be an issue. If we have great snow, we are busy. I mean, we're as busy as 4th of July weekend. If we don't, you're going to keep going up north until you find it. Ahmed Badji, CBS News, Detroit. Now, as an avid snowmobiler, I want to make sure we know, while Yamaha is the first to get out of the snowmobile sales, it's important to remind everybody that they're actually the lowest provider of that. Next on the list is Arctic Cat, and both Chase and, or, yeah, both Chase and Scott actually believe that one only has a few years left as well. 